Hello, everybody, and welcome to the weekly market update for the week of uh, Monday, September the 14th, 2020. I'm Jay Greg Nanny, and here joining me this week is Ian Saunders. And hope everybody had a great, great weekend. Um, you know, if if nothing came out of it, hopefully you got a chance to watch a little bit of American football, which was the official first week just wrapped up last night. Um, and then some some games, obviously uh, a couple a double header here for Monday night. So Ian, I know uh, I know we were all uh, looking forward to that that start date. Absolutely, there it was uh, definitely weird to see uh, all the all the players there, but no fans in the stadium. But I guess it doesn't change that much for those of us watching on television. So. <laughs> that, that's right, and then we were even talking. You know, they 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 have made. Um, at least from those that are that are watching, you know, on TV, the the fan experience is is not all that different. I mean, they were piping in music. They had uh, in many stadiums had uh, kind of cutouts of of what looked like people in the stands. And so, uh, uh, despite the fact that there being a lot of very high profile athletes wearing different jerseys this year, the the fan experience certainly uh, you know wasn't all that all that different. Um, but with that said, um, you know, as as we all are, you know, the NFL is continuing to to operate and trying to navigate through um, the, the the new normal or the or the current state of normal that we're all dealing with. And so, um, you know, with that, as we continue to uh, provide these market weekly market update calls, um, you know, one of the things that we've we've tried to do is um, provide some relevant information, um, some some pertinent talking points of of things that are going on in the market that are changing. And so, you know, as we kind of look back over the course of the past week and, and really the past couple of weeks, given uh, the Labor Day uh, holiday thrown in there, um, one of the things that we wanted to do is take a look back at some of the performance. What's happening in the past couple of weeks, um, the month of September. Uh, historically is a month that is is among the worst months for the market. It's uh, historically been the worst month of the market for the S&P 500. Uh, and, you know, so far this year that that uh, has not uh, changed a bit as we've seen some a bit of consolidation, a bit of pullback from from equities. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but, you know, on at the in the big picture perspective, uh, domestic equities or U.S. equities and Dolly uh, has continued to to do well, continue to improve and see some notable improvement after moving uh, up to number one in the latter part of August. Um, uh, additionally, and further, a couple other things that we wanted to talk about. Um, one is is a um, you know weakening bullish percent picture, and we'll, we'll take a look at some of the, the, the NYSE bullish percent, OTC bullish percent are among a sea of generally positive. Um, pictures for the equity market from a longer term perspective. Uh, the bullish percents are, are a couple uh, areas that are, are flashing a bit a bit of caution. So we'll talk through that. And then lastly, uh, look at the asset class group score page and, and see how the market's volatility over the past couple of weeks has, has affected some of that. Um, but, you know, before we dig into a lot of that, one of the things that we wanted to do is just kind of take a step back and, and look and provide some perspective uh, through the, the, um, the, the performance lens of what's gone on in the past week. And, you know, we've seen this a bit of consolidation um, uh, here over the course of the past week. And really um, some uh, areas that tend to be less correlated to traditional equities, the S&P 500, those are the areas that have done well the past week with uh, on, on the U.S. sector side, the basic material sector, uh, really the only sector that is up over the course of the past week. And prior to today, um, basic materials, interestingly enough, was the only sector uh, out of the broad, just kind of the broad macro sectors, the only broad sector that was actually in positive territory so far in the month of September, with XLB being up about 3%. Um, after that, you see other areas. The U.S. dollar uh, has, you know, has seen a bit of a, a gain here over the course of the past week, um, but continuing to, to um, trade a negative trend, the U.S. dollar. Uh, gold had another uh, pretty decent week, and, and obviously uh, gold has done very, very well, up over 20% over the course of the year. Uh, and then, you know, interestingly enough, you saw international developed markets do well, and then, and then bonds rounding out kind of the those areas that had, had positive positive returns over the course of the past week. Um, the S&P 500, when you look at uh, just, you know, over the course of the past week, down another two and a half percent, down a little over four percent for the month of September. And again, um, while it's while it's been pretty swift, uh, the month of September is, a, is not a, a month that has historically been very kind 
uh, to the S&P 500 and, and to stocks in general. So, you know, historically we've seen areas of the market like materials or like uh, precious metals. Um, those are the areas that have historically done well um, during the month of September. Um, and then uh, down there at the bottom, you see energy down about six and a half percent. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, energy specifically here in, in just a little bit. Um, but you know, and, and that's just kind of in, in terms of pure performance. One of the areas, you know, if you look at a, a chart of, of like the S&P 500 uh, uh, SPY, as an example, um, you know, the, the overall trend of SPY is certainly still positive. The score of SPY is still strong at 4.3. Um, and, and so you look at, at just that picture on the left-hand side there, and we continue to see a generally positive uh, picture for the S&P 500, specifically for the core equity market. And really, it, it, it it tells a lot of about what's happened over the course of the past couple of weeks. When you look at uh, the chart on the left-hand side there, after hitting 355 right at the top of the trading band, uh, has has basically uh, reversed down and pulled right back to the middle of its 10-week trading band. And you can see that too on the on the right-hand side of that weekly distribution for SPY. And, and for any chart on the site, there's a, there's a um, area right at the top that has a number. Um, so uh, an OBOS number. So right now for SPY, uh, that number uh, through the end of close of Friday was 10.68, which means it's um, basically 10% overbought. And, you know, historically, that's a very, very normal reading. And if you think about that weekly distribution, um, you see on the chart, on the SPY chart on the left-hand side there, you see that top, mid, and bot. And those three data points represent kind of the, the meat of the distribution. So if you think about a normal distribution bell curve and you turn that bell curve on its side, the midpoint, so for 330 in the case of the SPY, that midpoint is the peak of that curve. So that's like the, the middle of that curve. That is That would represent a, a reading of zero. It's neither overbought nor oversold. It's perfectly normal. Uh, in terms of where that stock, or in this case, that, that ETF, uh, wants to trade. And, you know, 68% of the time, that reading is going to be within one standard deviation of mean. So it's going to be, you know, between that, that basically minus 33 and plus 33. That's 68% of the time, that's where that ETF is going to want to trade. As you get uh, more overbought or closer to the top of that 10-week trading band, the more overbought that position is, or in this case, ETF. Uh, and so a, a uh, 355, that top, that represents 100% overbought on its weekly distribution. And so the further that goes, the more, the higher the probability becomes that you, we will get a reversion to mean. Now, um, if, if you think about that for a second, one of the analogies that, that always comes into my head when I think about um, weekly distributions and trading bands is, is a rubber band. And if you take a rubber band in its normal state and you begin to stretch it out and you stretch it out and you stretch it out a little bit further and the further it goes, the higher, the, the, the tighter it gets and the higher the probability is that at some point it's going to revert back to me. It's got to revert back to a normal state. And, and that's, you know, really what we saw over the course of the past couple of weeks. You saw the S&P 500 SPY get to 110% overbought. It was above the top of this trading band. And if you think about it, remember, a normal distribution bell curve, those tails in theory go out to infinity. So you could see, you know, 200, 300% readings in theory. Um, when we get to 100%, you know, over 100%, those are pretty overbought readings for the market. Um, and so, you know, basically what we saw is, is, is a reversion back towards mean, back towards that 330 level uh, here over the course of the past couple of weeks. And it, it came quickly, no doubt about that. Um, but, you know, that's, that's essentially what happened. And there's a couple of ways that, that things can, uh, quote, unquote, revert to mean. Uh, one of those simply being is um, if – the S&P 500 or, or whatever position it is that we're looking at, you could just see a, a straight pullback, kind of like what we got. Um, other times, a reversion to mean might mean just sitting around kind of at the level that it is, but the, the trading bands, because they're dynamic, they're built of 10 weeks worth of data, they will shift and move up uh, as time goes by uh, each week. Um, some of that data point comes off. So, um, you know, that's just you know, a little bit of perspective. And again, you can look at that picture through, through any individual stock. Um, but I think it's a very useful picture if it's something that, uh, one, you're trying to gain a little bit of perspective in terms of what just happened uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks. You know, a, a reversion back towards mean is certainly um, that that's what we can kind of see here. 
but they can also be helpful in, in terms of timing uh, entry and or exit points. If you're, if you're looking at a stock that you want to buy and you see that 100, 110, 115% overbought, uh, might make sense to wait for a pullback or just put partial positions on and, and, and uh, average in on, on potential pullbacks, something along those lines. But um, those trading bands, uh, they, they can certainly be useful um, in, in terms of providing some perspective and, and uh, as well as some, some timing points. So uh, with that said though, you know, that's, you know, in, in SPY, um, as obviously represented in the U.S. equity markets, as we mentioned at the top, um, you know, U.S. equities, domestic equities within Dolly has moved back up to number one, um, you know, by, by latter part of August. And, and so that's kind of kind of where we stand now, Ian. Absolutely there, Jay. And, and, and like you said, I mean, we're seeing that, that near-term uh, pullback and pretty uh, sharp pullback, as you said, that rubber band got a little bit stretched and so it snapped back relatively quickly. Um, but when we're looking at some of the broader indications we have of the underlying strength across the markets, one of those being the, the dynamic asset level investing or the Dolly tool um, that, that we've continued to track and follow in these Monday uh, um, update uh, videos uh, throughout the past several weeks. Um, and in the last one that we had looking a couple weeks ago there, um, the Mesk equities had just moved back up into that top position um, right, right bef uh, before the, at the end of the week prior to that right there on August 25th. Uh, moved into the number one position there, and we've seen it further separate itself um, from fixed income and cash as well um, over the past couple weeks here, now coming in with a buy signal tally count of 250 buy signals, uh, which is 32 signals ahead of the fixed income asset class and then significantly ahead of that cash asset class, which it beat a little bit earlier there in the summer. Um, and in looking at some of the other areas, we've seen fixed income and cash have, have continued to actually – and steadily lose signals over the past uh, over the past several days, um, whereas some of the other asset classes have either remained relatively similar. International equities picking up a couple buy signals over the past couple weeks. Commodities picking up a couple signals there as well, as we see, as, as Jay mentioned earlier on looking at the performance, um, that the performance breakdown that the U.S. dollar has, has not um, had a decent week over the past seven days, but prior to that, it's definitely shown some, some further downside. Um, and that tends to have some positive tailwinds there for commodities and international equities. Uh, but both of those areas are still remaining there in uh, the bottom half of the Dolly uh, asset class breakdown. Um, but with domestic equities continuing to, to advance, kind of solidly in that number one position there now, um, we have certainly seen some movement underneath the hood within the asset class, some areas that have maybe improved um, and some other areas that have definitely fallen off a little bit there. Um, so in looking at the buy signal tally of the domestic equity sector breakdown within the Dolly tool um, over the past month really here. So looking from August 11th through end of last Friday, looking at September 11th there, um, seeing most of the sectors that we see on this page have actually gained buy signals over that time frame with a few big losers. Um, seeing energy fall off pretty significantly there, uh, moving from a buy signal count of 169 right there in mid-August. Uh, down to its recent reading of 114, which puts it kind of solidly down there in the bottom half of the domestic equity sector breakdown um, after getting as high as the number one position there earlier this year. Uh, and that's been one point, Jay, that you and I were kind of touching on, that energy has over the years shown um, over the past several years, this, this buy signal count that it got to was above 200 buy signals, which is the first time it kind of surpassed that territory since 2008. Um, but, and it's continue to show attempts at trying to move higher over the past several years, um, but it's been unable to remain at really kind of elevated territory for a prolonged period of time. So it definitely moves around a, a fair amount quicker than many of the other sectors that, that you might be looking at um, here. And we saw that displayed with, with energy, especially over the past month here, uh, declining very significantly there to bring us to the, the current count of 114. Um, some other areas that have shown some pretty significant improvement recently, basic materials being one of those. Um, as Jay said, being one of the only areas that is going to be in positive territory, at least prior to movement there today, uh, with a current tally count of 151 buy signals, placing it just behind healthcare in that fourth spot at 153, which was unchanged. Um, and technology continues to hold on to that number one position after it regained it from energy, um, looking at that 211 buy signal count there, sitting uh, just four signals ahead of the consumer cyclicals, which has shown some, some, some big pickup and momentum here recently. Um, but in looking at some of the, the in looking at the sector movement underneath the hood, I mean, largely the same from a leadership perspective. So definitely seeing some areas improve, but um, seeing energy fall out of bed pretty significantly there, and some other areas such as utilities um, showing some some downside there as well. 
um, certainly be a place to keep an eye out there for as, as we move towards the fourth quarter of this year there, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, technology, you know, you look at that and, you know, technology has, has been a sector that, you know, has been up there for, for quite a while. Obviously, the growth theme is something in the market that continues to shine um, through in the market. Leave the, the past couple of weeks. I mean, the technology growth stocks um, pulled back a little bit harder uh, in the past couple of weeks than the broader equity markets did. Nonetheless, um, we haven't seen any any weakness from a relative uh, strength perspective amongst those areas of the market. But, you know, you look at energy, you look at utilities, those two two sectors, um, and, and even financials, I mean, those are two sectors that are certainly very, very heavily skewed towards the, the value end of the spectrum, uh, as well as, you know, when you look at underneath the surface of any number of our indicators, um, you know, n namely things like the bullish percent charts, um, those are going to ha have big weights inside of things, especially um, on, on like the BPNYSE, um, where that's going to be certainly more skewed towards um, smaller cap and, and value uh, type of stocks and, you know, those sectors. So the weakness amongst energy, ha we saw the bullish percent for the New York Stock Exchange reverse down a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, right, I think it was the 2nd of September, right at the beginning of the month, reverse back into a column of those. And, you know, it, it did so after moving up to 68%. So it did so with, you know, not extremely uh, elevated, but, but certainly higher uh, field position. Uh, than normal, but the the more I think important thing to just note here on the on the New York Stock Exchange bullish percent reversal down and it's continued to move uh, lower down to 60 percent is that the reversal down came after making a lower top, and so you know in June it got all the way up to 80 percent, pulled back, reversed back in July, got back up to 68 percent, um, despite the market indexes, despite the S&P 500, uh, the, the, you know, the cap weighted index is moving to new all time highs, the bullish percent reverse down to make a lower top. And uh, that is, is certainly um, something to pay attention to. Historically, when we've seen that happen, reversals down, making a lower top while the market indexes were hitting new highs. You know, historically, that has been been a sign that um, you know, it's, it's been weak for individual stocks out there. And, and, you know, one of the old adages is the, you know, the, the proverbial um, soldiers leaving the field while the generals continue to fight that battle. The, the, the generals, the big cap stocks pushing the market indexes to new highs, they are doing so with fewer soldiers behind them, with fewer stocks participating, fewer stocks being on buy signals. Um, and so that is, that is just a dynamic to, to pay attention to and, and, and to continue to monitor. Um, you know, certainly, as we mentioned at the beginning, there's still a tremendous amount of, of, of positives if you go down and, and make your pro-con list for, for equities. There's still far more positives than there are negatives. Um, this is the, the one that I would kind of put into that negative camp of the bullish percent reversing down. Um, and, and, and we'll see. Uh, it, maybe it could be short-lived and we could see this reverse, reverse right back up. Um, but, you know, that, that happening – uh, coupled with the, the bullish percent for the OTC stock. So there, that's going to be more of your growth, you know, much bigger universe. Um, but that moving to bear confirmed, giving a sell signal at 46% is, is something that if we were to, to, to look at the bullish percent charts today would be telling, you know, a, a cautionary tale. And, and, you know, these things are, are on defense uh, in what we would consider to be midfield. So, so not at either extreme. And so there's any number of, of right answers here, depending on, on how um, your, your, your portfolios are positioned and, and some of the right answers might mean, um, you know, buying some protective puts on, on positions that you have. Some right answers might mean just simply making sure you're holding stocks with good technical attributes or strong relative strength names and getting those weaker names out of the portfolio, those types of things. Nothing, we're not, we don't want to swerve, you know, completely off the road and, and, and um, you know, risk uh, basically crashing in, in the, in the ditch. Um, but it is certainly something in a, in a situation that we'll continue to monitor as, um, these bullish percent charts have reversed down. Um, they have done so a number of times this year as the volatility in the market was, was much high, higher, obviously, early in the year. That volatility has calmed down a bit. And, you know, you look at any number of measures, that even the VIX uh, as a measure of volatility is back in the, the mid-20s or so. Um, so that is m much more closer to normal. I think the historical average for the VIX is somewhere around 20 um, so much more normal levels than we were seeing earlier on in the year um, readings, you know, well above 50. So, um, you know, so that is just, you know, to say, you know, B 
be, be cautious. We're seeing individual stocks um, give sell signals. We haven't seen yet those sell signals on individual stocks turn into negative trend changes. And that would kind of be the next progression is if, if these bullish percents are, are an initial sign of weakness, if we see that roll over into the trends, so trends turning negative, um, that would be another another thing we would put into that negative camp. But if you look at, um, you know, like the, the uh, PT chart for, for S&P 500 PT, uh, excuse me, for, for NYSE PT at uh, NYSE, that chart is still uh, in a column of X's above 50%. Um, PT SPX, which is the percent of stocks in a positive trend for the S&P 500, is still in a column of X's uh, uh, above 70%. So there's still about three quarters of S&P 500 stocks that are in positive trends today. So those would be um, those would be kind of the next things we'd be watching um, for, for any potential weakness. But, you know, as we look at it, the landscape today, whether it's um, uh, the trend of, of SPY that we looked at earlier, whether it's Dolly with U.S. equities being ranked number one, or whether it's, you know, just looking kind of at a macro asset class group score picture, there's certainly still uh, more more positives for the equity market than there are negatives. Absolutely there, Jay. And, and, and you mentioned kind of other things to keep an eye out for as we head down the next few weeks here, heading towards um, heading towards the last three months of the year. Um, one of those areas that we've been continuing to kind of keep track of is the, that macro view on the asset class group scores page, which is going to be that initial view that you come to when you look at this page for those of you following along on the platform. Um, two of the main ranks or, or readings that we look at on that page are going to be the money market percentile rank and the U.S. equity core percent rank, which you see here displayed on the left-hand side of the page, um, which is looking at basically how strong is the core equity market relative to the rest of the 135 groups that we have on the page, and then how strong is cash relative to the rest of those groups. Uh, we, we have two rep group representative groups that we use for those percentile rankings, and that's going to be for the uh, money market percent rank we use, unsurprisingly, the U.S. money market group um, for that percentile rank reading, really displaying with that reading displaying okay, how, what percentage of names is, is cash being right now. And we see money market come in with a current score of 2.12 in pretty low territory, a place it's been for the last few weeks here, and a place we didn't really see change all that much with the market the pickup and market volatility over the past uh, week or two here. It got a little moved a little bit higher up above 7%, but now back in the, at 6%. So really around the same place that we saw it there towards the end of August and in, in, in very low field, field position there relative to the rest of the groups um, that we look at on those rankings. And on the flip side, we see that the S&P 500 index funds group, which is the representative we use for that U.S. core equity, uh, U.S. equity core percent rank, um, it still has a, a strong group score at 4.67, leading it that U.S. equity core percent rank um, to, to a pretty strong reading at, at 94 percent. Um, it has been higher as in, in prior earlier in this market rally, um, but above 90 percent is still still quite high. Uh, for that group as a whole. And we didn't see all that much score deterioration across the board for many of those kind of growth oriented areas um, that we continue to kind of keep an eye on here that have been leading the market higher throughout much of this rally. Um, there has been some movement on this group scores page though in looking at many of those areas, those growth oriented areas, and especially the S&P 500 index funds group itself got into pretty heavily overbought territory uh, with that market rally that we saw um, really in some of the highest overbought readings we've seen for that group, at least in the past several years, right at the beginning of September. Um, and, and they've moved back pretty significantly from those levels, um, those levels being above 100%, moving back to an, an average overbought oversold reading for the group as a whole of, of 11.23%, um, just providing further indication of that uh, that normalization that we're seeing across many of these these major market indices here, um, which could, as, as Jay was alluding to earlier, could, could definitely – um, proved to to have some opportune buying opportunities there. Um, just just would not uh, just um, looking more here to to continue to to monitor this page to to continue to continue to see if we start to see some of these core directions pick up the pace again. If we start to see some of the more participation um, follow through on the bullish percent side of things, um, definitely could be a place to continue to monitor here for those those areas that are going to be either besting the broader market or they're maybe potentially moving a little bit higher in score a little bit down on the page. Um, one of those being commodities that so we've been continuing to keep an eye on here, coming into the current uh, group score there of 2.92, um, which has been hovering right around that three score line um, for, for the past few weeks at this point. Um, continue to see if we can see that positive 
1.3 score direction, boost that score uh, back up into more positive territory, the green zone, as we refer to it, with those average groups with the score above, or those groups with an average score above 3.0. Um, so still having some trouble remaining above that territory. It's gotten it got over that ter territory above three um, for a day or two there um, or earlier on, and we continue to see it remain at those levels. So definitely another place to keep an eye on there outside of the the equity or fixed income space as we look towards the last few months of the year here, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know it's great. It's you know you, you look out and, and you know not not a whole lot has changed despite the the I would say um, you know nervousness around the, the pullback and and um, you know having some perspective on the markets and you see rankings of core equity percent of above ninety and money market below ten percent. You know those are things that um, you know are, are still uh, generally positive signs for the market. So. Um, as always, great, you know, great, great conversation, great perspective in terms of, of what's going on in the market. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please don't hesitate to give us a call, 804-320-8511, uh, or email dwa at dorseyright.com. Uh, otherwise, if you don't currently have access to our website and you were interested in taking a trial, please uh, uh, visit our page. We can set you up for, on a free 30-day trial, have a, a custom demo walkthrough set up for you. But uh, until then, if there's something that we can can do for you, please uh, let us know. Otherwise, I uh, hope everybody has a great week. Appreciate you as always joining us uh, for the call this week and look forward to talking to you next week.